I'm just kidding. In this shocking episode of my finishing room in your basement series, I'm going to show you guys how to rough wire a room and install a circuit breaker. To make this video, I've consulted with a master electrician just to make sure that I provide you guys the best possible information. And obviously, I like to joke around, but electricity is no joke. So if you're uncomfortable with anything I do in this video, hire a professional. Now let's get to it. I'm going to start off by installing all my electrical boxes for my switches and outlets. I like using these deep nail-on electrical boxes. They're easy to install and you can fit a lot of wires in there without it getting too cramped. You should be able to see some numbers on your electrical boxes. Mine are on the inside and they tell you how many wires you're allowed to run into this box. And I'm not so sure you guys can see this, but the inside of my box says 11, number 14. That means that when using 14 gauge wire, you can have up to 11 conductors going into this box. But keep in mind, all ground wires count as one wire, and each screw that holds the outlet in counts as one. So we automatically can subtract three possible connectors. So in this case, I can run up to nine hot and neutral wires into this box. And what all that basically means is I can run up to four 14-2 wires into this box. For the location of the outlet boxes, I use the 612 rule. You need to have an outlet within six feet of all entry points to the room and one at least every 12 feet. The reason for the 612 rule is because most floor lamps have a six foot cord. This is a minimum for code. I plan to have more outlets than that. I feel like I never have enough outlets. Once you've marked out where you plan to put each outlet box, you can nail the boxes to the studs. For the outlet height, it's best to keep it uniform with the rest of your home. So find an outlet and measure the distance from the floor to the bottom of the box. And if you don't have any other outlets around that you can reference, you can mount your box 12 inches from the top of the floor covering to the bottom of the box. Most boxes will have these marks on the side. When you put the box on the stud, bump these against the face of the stud. That will give you the right position for half inch drywall. And now for the switch boxes. There needs to be one near all entry points to the room. There's no standard for the height of the box, but most electricians mount the box 48 inches from the floor to the top of the box. I'm going to match what I have in the rest of the basement. I'm going to have one light switch over here for my main lights. And another light switch over here for the lights above my desk and workbench. Now on to the ceiling boxes. Building code requires you to have one switch light in every room, but that could even be a switched outlet. So I'm gonna have four lights in the main part of the room, and then another three lights over here over my work area. Let's bring some light to this dark place. As you can see, I have a ton of HVAC running up here, so conventional recessed lights weren't possible, but I still wanted something with that recessed light look. So I'm gonna go with some LED disc lights, which just need a regular electrical box. In order to get the lights exactly where I want them, I bought several types of ceiling boxes. So this is a standard ceiling box and attaches directly to your joists or studs. This box has adjustability in case I wanna put my light in between two joists. This pan box is only half an inch deep and can be mounted directly to a joist or stud. However, you can't have any junctions in this style box because it's too shallow. So basically, wire can come in for a light, but it can't continue to another. When using a pan box or any other metal box, be sure to add a ground screw. All metal boxes need to be grounded. I first took some measurements to make sure all my lights were as evenly spaced as possible and the same distance from the walls. Then depending on the type of box, I just screw or nail all of my boxes in place. Be sure your boxes are sticking down just a little less than whatever thickness your drywall will be. The adjustable boxes and the 2x2 soffit need an extra 2x2 on top to be able to position them at the correct height. The metal boxes will also need a snap and grommet to protect the wire and hold it into the box. Make sure all your boxes are mounted straight or your lights could end up crooked. It's easier to fix it now before the drywall is installed. Once all my boxes were installed, I ran my home run. The home run is a wire that comes from your panel and feeds everything that you want to power with either a 15 or 20 amp circuit. I'm using a 15 amp circuit for this room, so I just need to use 14 gauge wire or 14-2. If you decide you need a 20 amp circuit, you will need 12 gauge wire or 12-2. A 20 amp circuit is usually only needed for rooms with equipment with a heavier draw, like a laundry room, bathroom, kitchen, or possibly a garage. I'm using a 3 quarter inch drill bit to drill all my holes, and I put a link to this one down below. 
For my home run, I was lucky enough to have some existing holes I could use. But when you're drilling your holes, be sure to check on the other side before you drill your hole to ensure there's nothing important on the other side. If running parallel to a joist, you need a staple every four feet. If you need to drill two holes near each other through an engineered joist like this, you need to ensure there's at least twice the larger hole in diameter spacing from edge to edge. Run your home run wire all the way to the closest electrical box that you installed earlier. Be sure to leave plenty of extra wire on both ends. I like to label the home run and any wires going to switches. Now run wire into each electrical box. Again, be sure to leave plenty of extra wire sticking out. For the switches, you'll need to run wire from an outlet into the box and then in series to each light it will control. When drilling holes in the studs, be sure to drill in the center. A 3 quarter inch hole in the center of the stud ensures screws and nails won't hit the wire without a nail plate. If you have less than 1 1 quarter inch from the edge of the stud to the edge of the hole, you will need to add a nail plate to protect the wiring. Drill your holes at a comfortable height. For me, that's at about waist height. You also want to make sure you drill all your holes about the same height to make the wire easy to pull through. There's nothing in the building code that dictates the height of the holes. Be sure you're adding staples within 8 inches of all electrical boxes and a staple every 4 foot. When the wire goes through a hole, that is considered a staple. You can put up to two wires in a staple. Three wires or more will require a staple and a zip tie. When you're all done with all your wiring, fill all the holes going through the top plate or into other wall cavities with fire resistant expanding foam. Next I finished out all the boxes to protect them from the drywallers but also to prepare them for the work I need to do after the drywall is installed. This is 14-2 wire. It's called that because all the wires are 14 gauge and there are two wires and one ground. This one right here that's bare is the ground. This one that's white is called the neutral. And this one that's black is called the hot wire. I mean, it's not really hot, but I mean, I can touch it. But I mean, it will be later, I guess, once I hook it up to the circuit breaker. But you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I'll start with the outlets. First, I strip the sheathing so there's at least an eighth of an inch still going into the box. Next, I'll connect all the ground wires and add a pigtail. Then I'll cut all the wires so there's at least six inches sticking out of the box. Now carefully fold the wire and put it back into the box. Most ceiling lights already come with pigtails on them, so I'm just gonna cut the wires with a little more than six inches sticking out of the box, strip off the sheathing, then splice all the wires together and fold them back into the box. Now for the switches. Most basic switches do not need a neutral wire, so you can just connect those and push them back into the box. If your switch does need a neutral wire, it's easy to add a pigtail later. Most switches that need a neutral will also include a wire to use as a pigtail. You will also want to pigtail the grounds and the hot wires. Then I take the switched wire that goes to the lights and wrap it around the other wires so I can identify it later. Then cut them all off a little over 6 inches from the box and fold them neatly into the box. When installing the new circuit breaker, be sure to know what type of breaker you need. If a room requires GFCI outlets, it doesn't need an AFCI breaker. If the room won't have any GFCI outlets, then more than likely it needs an AFCI breaker. Rooms where a water source is present will require a GFCI outlet and will not need an AFCI breaker. Once you've determined whether or not you need an AFCI breaker, be sure to know what type of breaker your box requires. My box uses square D breakers. When you're working in an electrical panel, always wear rubber soled shoes, just in case you accidentally touch something hot. This might reduce your risk of grounding yourself. Speaking of which, I'm gonna put this back on now.
If you're not comfortable working with a live breaker box, then the first thing you should do is shut off the main breaker. This is going to turn off all of the power in your home, so be ready. Now you can remove the cover. Pro tip, you can use a number two square drive to do everything in the panel. To install breakers in a regular circuit, you connect the ground and neutral on the ground and neutral bar. They are bonded together. For an AFCI circuit like this, the ground goes to the ground neutral bar. Both the hot and neutral will go to the breaker. The breaker will have its own neutral and then goes to the ground neutral bar. I like to install the neutral and hot wires onto the breaker before installing it. It just seems easier to me. Make sure the breaker is off and then install it by connecting on this side, then rocking it into place and snapping it in. Give it a little wiggle to make sure it is properly secured. Then just make sure your wiring looks nice and neat like the rest of the wires in the box. Leave this new breaker off for now until you have your outlets and lights installed. Then put the cover back on and turn on the main breaker. Be sure to label your breaker in the box. Do not use any abbreviations to do this. Well, that's it. I am done. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. And then if you really, really liked it, hit that notification button so you don't miss my next video, which will not be doing drywall. Because honestly, I'm terrible at drywall and I don't want you guys to see that disaster. So my next video is going to be finishing out the electrical work that I started in this video. We'll see you guys.